Hey guys, uh, we're out here working on some fur tonight. Um, I actually watched uh, Coon Creek's video here, oh, probably a week ago or so, about how he sharpens a flushing knife. Uh, great video. We pretty much do it identical. Uh, he used a stone. I was just using a common steel when I do mine. But I wanted to share with you guys, back when NAFA was around, down here in State Center, Iowa, we had a, a little NAFA get together where they'd talk about the markets, uh, fur grading, just kind of a, a gathering to share with trappers of what's going on and, and how to grade fur. Uh, I actually got the opportunity, I can't think of the guy's name now and it's driving me absolutely crazy. I've been trying to think of it for about two days now. But there's a, a guy there from NAFA, he was one of their main fur graders, uh, handled thousands of furs and I asked him how do you sharpen or touch up a flushing knife uh, I'd been struggling with it for for a few years I only knew how to sharpen a flushing knife you know it'd get duller and crap and I'd take time and sharpen it and he showed me a really good way to touch up a flushing knife that to anybody that's ever sharpened a common knife will just baffle them because I thought he was joking when he showed me I thought I was going to ruin my knife but as you guys know, I use a caribou knife. Uh, I, I like the, the give. It's kind of got a little flex to it. That For me, I like it. Other people like something more sturdy like the Necker or the English. Totally fine. I, I get it. Use whatever works for you. But Anyway, guys, I want to show you this. So we got the beveled side here and the sharp and the, the vertical side is over here. I'll take my steel. And I promise you guys, this actually works. I'm not just messing with you, trying to ruin your knife. I'll set it on top, just perfectly flat. And I'll go down this blade three times. Then I'll go down the back side once. Not quite perfectly flat. I'm going to turn the knife here. for it makes it a little easier to see what I'm doing. It's not quite perfectly flat. I'll do a little bit of a kink. What you're doing is when you push that down on the top, you're creating a burr on the back side. This burr is what actually is sharp and flushes your knife for you. And I'll kind of flatten that out once. And then I go one more down the top. And that flushing knife is ready to go. You know, I'm doing 10 to 15 coon, maybe 20 if I get a good run of, of coon fat where it's just, just the right consistency, which I'll talk about later. A different video but you know I just literally just one two three one one and I'm ready to go for a few more coon you know if, if you have to have to sharpen it you know Coon Creek has a great video on that uh, this is just a way to, to, to touch it up uh, a lot of people I, I never knew that. that that completely baffled me I really thought the guy was messing with me but I'll tell you what it does wonders it might take you two or three repetitions of doing that you know, do a three one one, another three one one, but it works and it works great. Uh, you know, that way you're not taking the time pulling out the stones and everything else, which I mean doesn't take terribly long anyway. But this is just a good way for you guys that you know you just want to quick touch it up real quick. Uh, it works and it works great. So anyway, guys, uh, I'm gonna get back to finishing fur here. I wish the wife was out here because I just I'd go ahead and do a video of a dull knife to after doing that technique to a sharp knife and show you the difference. Uh, it's pretty late here. I think it's about 10:45. She's long since in bed. But if we get a night out here where she's not too swamped with homework and stuff, I'll get her out here to film this. Uh, we're gonna be doing a, a skinning of a skunk video and essence removal here before too long too. But you know I'll get her out here and I'll show you guys the difference of what that actually makes it. it you would be surprised that, you know, everyone thinks, you know, a knife, you have to go straight with the beveled side. Uh, but this doesn't, it's only got one beveled. It's got a flat side. So it, you can't go using those, those electric sharpeners with the belts. It just doesn't work. So anyway, guys, uh, we'll plan on seeing you this weekend. We're going after beaver pretty hard, but I just want to touch in with you guys and, and show you my technique on sharpening a knife. You know, it, it works great. It came from when NAFA was around, one of the head guys of that. And I trusted him, and it worked great for me, and I'm sure it'll work good for you. You might have to do it two or three times, like I said, but I'll tell you what, it, it really helps, and 
beats fighting a dull knife because if you're putting up any type of numbers at all you need this knife to be sharp uh that's i mean when it comes to handling any fur or putting up fur or any fur handling at all this i believe is your main investment a good quality knife you know you need a, a flushing beam and boards and pins and everything else but your knife that fits you fits your board and how you master your technique on flushing is what's going to work i use the necker a lot of, or i'm sorry i use the caribou i know a lot of guys use the necker they love it a lot of guys hate the caribou i love it it's really whatever works for you uh, you know they got the english knife the weeby there's there's several out there i just highly suggest you get a quality one not one of those 14 or 15 dollar ones because it's basically like lead you i mean you hit anything at all and it's just dull instantly so Anyway, I'll quit rambling, guys, but I just want to show you my technique on how to flush it, how to sharpen a flushing knife, or touch up, I should say, but works great for me, and I'm sure it'll work good for you. We'll see you guys this weekend.